Well hello and welcome to my latest video. First of all by way of an apology you're probably wondering what sort of a guy has the nerve to make a YouTube video wearing a t-shirt as filthy as the one that you are wearing? Well you've got, a, you've got a point but the fact is I've been slobbing around the house, I'm sorting stuff out, I'm getting ready for something which I'll tell you about in a moment and that's why I'm wearing this filthy t-shirt. I do like this t-shirt because it has a picture of a camera on the front. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Leica camera. I used to have a Leica camera. I sold it. Uh, now I just have a t-shirt with a picture of a Leica on it. Anyway, why are we doing this video? Well, what have I got in my hand, boys and girls? I've got an Audax UK Brevet or Brevet. Not quite sure of the pronunciation. It's a French word, so it probably ought to be Brevet, but I think a lot of people call it Brevet, so let's call it Brevet. And I'm doing a what am I doing? Well, I'm doing a 200k ride and many of you experienced Audaxes will say, well, that's not very much, Julian. Well, I've done, I actually have done 150 miles. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in K, but it is more than 200k. I did that when I did the Amstel Gold full route a couple of years ago. Fabulous event. Went with the old Portland Cycling Club, if you've uh, uh, ever thought of joining a club in South London. But I thought it's about time that I did a proper... Audax event. A couple of my friends said they were doing it and I thought yep it's time to go. So I signed up for it and I've got, got all my bits of paper, I've got all my uh, notes. Now you, you may wonder if you're not familiar with the Audax scene. Uh, Audax is, is basically long distance riding but the thing about a permanent event is it's not like a, a, a kind of sportive or organized event that you enter. You can do a permanent event any time you want. You have the card and you do have to get evidence or send a GPS track into the Audax people but apart from that you do it when you want uh, in your own time. There is, there is a time limit, I forget how much it is for this one but it's quite a long uh, time limit. Is it a week and a half? No it's not a week and a half. Might be 12 hours, 13 hours, I, I don't know, 200k anyway. I believe I can get round in the time scale. This is called the Medway Meander, if you're interested. Probably a little bit late to sign up because it's going to be on Sunday and it is now Friday. But, you know, as you can ride it any time you want, it doesn't really matter. You just wouldn't be riding it with me if that was important to you. And it goes round um, uh, Kent, basically, bits of Sussex. Um, goes up from Edenbridge, starts in Edenbridge, goes up to the Medway, loops down uh, towards Eastbourne, back up through Tenterden and back to uh, Edenbridge again. I did think... I live in West Wickham, by the way, which is about 18 miles, what it was that, 30k, I suppose, from Eden, which I did think of riding to the start and riding to the back, uh, riding back again. But I, I think, having thought about it, I probably won't. Well, no, no, what, what are you saying, Julian? Of course you're not. You're not going to. You're going to drive. You're going to put the bike in the car and drive to the start, and then I'm going to ride the event. And I shall be making a video of the event, yes, sorry to bore you guys, but I shall be, I'm not the first person to do a video of an Audax event or a long distance cycling event, and will my video be any, any more interesting or any more amusing than anybody else's? Well, of course it will, of course it will. Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see, and you'll have to watch it to find out. Anyway, I'm going to uh, show you a few bits of my preparations, so come with me over to the table. Yet yeah, now, now, Come with me over to the table, now! Getting ready for the big day. Uh, Audax, yes guys, Audax, 200k. 200, yes, count them. Coming up, I hope. Anyway, I thought I'd do a flat lay for you. And uh, no, that is not what some of you might think it is. A flat lay is where you lay everything out flat on a background, quite an important background, this one, and then you describe it. So. Um, this is, my, this is my trusty pointer coming in here. This is a, uh, a park tool, uh, no, not a park tool tire lever, although it's blue. Uh, this is a tire lever, and this is another tire lever here. I'm struggling to see the end of my pointer in the, uh, uh, in the viewfinder, isn't that interesting? This is a uh, inner tube, uh, in case you were wondering. This is a uh, park tool multi-tool. And this is a CO2, sorry that was my other hand creeping into the picture there, this is a CO2 uh, canister with a um, valve connector on the top and a rubber grip so you don't freeze your hands. Now you're wondering what this, this exciting looking object here, 
This is a Dynaplug um, pill box or something like that and it's designed to go into a tubeless tyre if you have a puncture and fix it. I've tried, not tried this particular version before, tried other versions and they never bloody worked for me. So I'm, I'm taking this one along and hopefully it will work. All of this, by the way, fits into a speed sleeve uh, saddle bag, which is, which is here. I might have to do a separate flat lay of that. Anyway, it'll all fit into there and I'll show you how it all fits together. Don't go away. Well, here's everything packed neatly away into the speed sleeve saddle bag. And that will go, believe it or not, onto the saddle of my Fairlight, Fairlight Seekin. Just reaching my hands under here so you can see. Those straps go onto the uh, rails of the saddle. And then you do it. Do you do it round like that or you do it round like that? Yes, you do it round like that. There you are. And it's sealed with one of those very clever, very clever... Uh, Velcro straps designed by uh, Jeremiah Velcro um, in Chicago in 1872 after catching his uh, trousers, Mark Spencer trousers interestingly enough, um, going out for a walk, coming back and finding lots of those burrs stuck to his trousers and Jeremiah Velcro thought I know here's an opportunity for me to become a multi billionaire. Unfortunately he didn't patent his device so he didn't but that's a uh, that's another story. And here we have the uh, snack selection or the food selection that I will be taking with me on the ride. Now, uh, my mate Colin from the Old Portland Cycling Club, www.oldportlandcc.co.uk, saw a picture that I placed on Instagram and said, ho, 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 don't like the look of that, Julian. A bit too much sugar rush there, insulin spikes, short energy rush, not what you need at all, but I'm going to ignore his advice. He suggested, by the way, that I take a couple of mackerel. Mackerel, can you believe that? That's a fish, I think, and put them in my pocket and I can just imagine how my uh, fellow riders will feel if I'm riding on chewing, chewing on a mackerel and then throwing the bones into the side of the road. Do not throw your bones into the side of the road, by the way. Anyway, let me show you what I'm taking. This here is a uh, packet of fig rolls. They are called, uh, what are they, Bo Bolands? Bolands? Sun-drenched figs baked in golden pastry. Yes, I, I bet. Not taking the whole packet, um, but I haven't taken them out of the packet yet because I'm not going for a couple of days and I don't want them to get all stale. This is a little box. These are wine gums in here. Not taking the plastic box. Again, took them out of the packet so I could show you. Put them in the box, put a lid on the box so they won't go stale before we go. This is a saurine bar which is a malt malt lunch loaf i'm sure many of you know about these might take a couple of these although there's only one shown in the picture this is a little little packet of honey believe it or not which i got a couple of years ago on i believe the tour flanders uh sportive getting a bit uh, crusty and stale now but um uh, gave, gives you a little bit of energy boost this is a kendall mint cake gel this is uh chocolate mint and there's another one just over here which is uh ordinary mint flavor these are rather tasty gels rather sweet a bit like uh uh swallowing liquid uh kendall mint cake as you as you can imagine but uh not unpleasant for that not a massive fan of gels but they do work this is a packet of raisins here and this says mini mini snack raisins i'm not sure if these are mini raisins or it's just a mini snack box anyway produced by sainsbury's this is a graze protein oat bites i must say i'm rather partial to these i'm not sure how much energy they give you but they are rather tasty so i'll probably be taking a few of those i've also made some flapjacks and i'm going to show those in a separate video because they deserve not a separate video but uh, a separate take on my video because they deserve some attention all on their own the food will fit mostly into this handlebar bag, which is by Cordell, and I bought it from the service course in Girona. And it is a really, uh, really nice bag, really nicely made, but just a perfect size. Obviously, I'm not going to have the whole packet of fig rolls stuffed in there like that. That'll look a bit silly. And that orange thing that you can see is the box of wine gums. They will be emptied into a plastic bag. I will also take my uh, Revelate 
top tube bag, which I'll show you in a separate take, but that will probably be used just to store my GoPro camera. So I don't want to put in a whole load of Jelly Babies or Tang Fastics or Wine Gums or something like that, or even gels, and then find that for some reason they start to uh, melt in the, hunt, in, the, in the hot weather, or that the gels start to leak, which happened to me once before. I went on a, I think it was an still Gold uh, a year or two ago, just about to start Amstel Gold, put my hand into my back pocket and pulled out a whole load of gloopy, syrupy, sugary mess. And I thought, who has done something naughty into the back pocket of my jersey? But it just turned out to be a gel which had burst. So um, a lesson for you there. It wasn't a Kendall Mint Cake gel, incidentally. It was an SIS gel, not casting any aspersions on uh, SIS gels. That's just happened to be what it was. <laughs> The honey going in, it's the, uh, the grey star going in, and there's a there's a gel going in, and there's a packet of raisins going in. Now, apart from the other food that I shall be taking, I shall also be taking some of these homemade Julian flapjacks. Yes, what are they made from? They're made from uh, oats, uh, butter, a bit of olive oil, quite a lot of peanut butter, some dried cherries, some dried apricots, uh, some raisins, bit of honey, bit of golden syrup, bit of brown sugar. Uh, basically all mixed together over a low heat and then baked in the oven at a fairly low temperature. I can't give you exact quantities because I never know the exact quantities. I just chuck in various bits of the various ingredients and if I need more of one then I add it and if I need more of the other then I add it. Anyway they are very very tasty and they're good for energy so I'll be taking some of these with me. This is the Revelate top tube bag, which I've waxed lyrical about in a couple of videos. One of the things I particularly like about it is that it has a magnetic closure, which closes with a rather satisfying click. Did you hear that? I never tire of listening to that sound. I'm tired. I'm tired of sad bastard. Let's, 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 do you want to hear that again? Right, so we just close that over like that and a satisfying magnetic clip. Anyway, my GoPro fits very nicely in that and perhaps a couple of snacks that aren't going to melt. But highly recommend that bag. Not widely available in this country. I actually ordered it from the States and it cost me, I don't know, about $40 and then about $199 in uh, VAT, customs duties and uh, uh, Uber fees and God knows what else you'd pay to import something from the States. But there you are, well worth the money, well worth the money. Now, bike-wise, I'm taking this, my Fairlight Seacan gravel bike. Yes, why have I got a gravel bike? Well, you can watch my video 10 Reasons Why You Should Have a Gravel Bike, or you could watch my video 7 Reasons Not To Buy a Gravel Bike, and then make up your own mind. The main reason I'm taking this uh, Fairlight Seacan is because it is very comfortable, and it's very comfortable for a number of reasons. One is it's a steel frame with a carbon fork, uh, very compliant, very uh, very comfortable. Um, it's also got fat tyres, 40mm IRC Boken tubeless tyres. Had some problems with tubeless tyres in the past, but so far going very well with these and very happy with them. And they roll very well on tarmac and uh, off-road, although I won't be going off-road on this Audax, I don't think. The other uh, contributory factor in the comfort stakes is the Canyon seat post, the split seat post, which adds a certain amount of flex. But I think one of the main reasons is the saddle. This is a Gilles Bertou Soulor saddle. Didn't come with the bike. Bought it separately on the recommendation of my friend Henry Wildberry. If you've never watched his videos, he is a very laid back dude from California. And I do like watching his videos. You can see it's got a, a Shimano GRX 1x group set, by the way. Hydraulic disc brakes, of course. With a 42 front chain ring and an 11 to 42 cassette. Uh, the Revelate top tube bag is there attached to the bike and the Cordell handlebar bag is attached on there. The rear light, which you can just see, is an exposure rear light. Been very happy with it so far. So you've seen the food, you've seen the bike, you've seen the kit that I'm taking. You haven't seen the stuff that I'm wearing, but that's not that important, is it? So uh, look forward to seeing you on the road. Well, the next time you see me should be on the road. Now, today's episode was brought to you by The Monument, a novella 
about the Liège Best on Liège Sportive, written by me, Julian Hutchings. Not available in all good bookshops, but available from Amazon, either as a paperback or as a download for your Kindle. Now, I hope you enjoy my videos. If you do, please subscribe, please like, please share, please tell your friends, tell the whole world. And let's get everybody who is watching Julian's videos. And if there are any publishers out there who want to make a shed load of money by publishing some of my books, then please get in touch through the usual channels. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time.